Bones, the Dr. Bones Show. Here's my friend Skelly Skeleton. I'd like to say hello to everyone out there, Skelly. Hey, how are you? This is Skelly Skeleton. Actually, Skelly wanted to show everyone his brain today. He's got a brain. Hey, let's, let's take a look at Skelly's brain. Hey, look at my brain. I love using the brain. Wow, it's bigger than mine. Oh, my goodness. Put that on there. Okay. All right, so Skelly. Skelly will be helping me out throughout the show. Maybe he'll help me out the door after the show. I don't know, but we'll see. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about vectors. In another segment, I talk at length about vectors, vector algebra. But I wanted to bring up a, a couple of important points because we want to show you some examples of where you would use vectors, right, in calculating forces and different things like that. So if you wanted to, for example, put a coordinate system together for vectors. Here we've got an arrow that's representing the vector. By the way, uh, I know it's not pol uh, polite to point, but you can always say, I'm not pointing, I'm a vector. So, kind of a joke you can take home with you. But <laughs> here we've got a coordinate system for the vector. Right, here's my vector, and here I've got a y-axis here and an x-axis here. So, this vector is traveling through space. A vector has a size or magnitude and a direction. So if you're going to say, well, I'm going uh, north or south, east or west, you're telling someone you're going in a particular direction. And if you have a particular, say, velocity or size, the magnitude of the vector, you're telling them two things, the size and the direction of what's going on. All right? So for example, forces and interesting things are involved with uh, using uh, vectors. So here we've got the x and the y. And I can change the angle of the vector, and we can resolve this vector into its component vectors. Meaning if I go along the x-axis, I can say this vector proceeds to this distance, and by projecting this downward onto the x-axis, I have the x-component of this vector. And if I bring it across to the y-axis, I have the y-component of this vector. So the y-component and the x-component. So, useful way to examine vectors in terms of its component vectors. If I wanted to put together, say for example, I've got here, let me just take this one out. I've got vector A and vector B. Now I'm going to decide, well, let's angle them at a certain angle or something like that. Say here's my vector A, and I want to add to it vector B. What would be the resulting vector? Well, you would have the vector A and vector B added together, I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Here I've got A and B. So if I said, here's my A, it goes from here to here, go from the tail to the head, but then the next vector goes from the head to the tail, right? So this tail of B would be onto A. So let's do that with this one here. All right, so here we, we can say, here's my A, here's my B, but now let's have this B over here and A will be this one here, so you form a parallelogram, all right? But the resultant vector, here's A and here's the B, right, would be this length, A plus B. So I'll put this in here, put the parallelogram back together, and then you'll see. I invented this actually, but sometimes it doesn't go in as easily. You go to those dollar stores and find something that's, well, a dollar, and it's a lot cheaper than trying to buy something in the store. So here's my resultant vector, the red vector. Right here we've got the A and the B together, and here is the resultant vector. So A plus B is this red vector, A plus B, the resultant vector. Right? And if you change this, for example, well, you'll change the result in vector, depending on what you want to do with A and B. I could take A and subtract B from it. I would also have a result in vector, right? So I do uh, at length this in the vector algebra segment. So today we just wanted to remind you. Okay. Now, I wanted to tell you a little bit about forces and the use of vectors. Here, for example, I've got a weight, or mass, I should say. It's a weight when we have gravity, right? Gravitational acceleration, weight is mass times gravity. So here I have a mass, but if I'm in a gravitational field, I have a weight. So mass times gravity is weight. But I also have a string and a force is directed along the string. In this case, I say there's a tension along the string. There's a tension force 
pointing in the upward direction. So here's my vector in the upward direction. We could call that the tension. But we also have the weight, and that points in the downward direction. And if we say this is static, meaning it's not moving, we say the net effect, the net force, is zero because the tension cancels out with the weight. So the net force is zero, all right? Whereas if this is moving, right, if I pull this upward, this force going upward is greater than the force going downward. We say this is a kinetic effect or dynamic effect. In this case, the net vector is going to be, or net force, is going to be an acceleration upward or a acceleration downward, depending on which force is greater, this one or this one, okay? So it's very simple, all right? And we can extend this to multiple vectors, all right? For example, I've got a ring. Three forces are on this ring. Because the ring is not moving in space, we say the net force on the ring is zero. By the way, the net force isn't a particular force. It's the sum of all of the forces involved. So here I've got a force here, a force here directed away from the ring, and I've got a mass hanging on the bottom, which, of course, is in a gravitational field, so it's a weight. And they're about, oh, 120 degrees separating them, right? 360 degrees around the circle, so about 120 degrees between each of these tensions, all right? And we say that the net force is zero because it's not moving. But if I decide to move it around, well, now our net force is no longer zero, so we have an acceleration. So that's what the net force concept is all about. And this, by the way, would be called a free body diagram, and you could put its component vectors together as well. So in the next segment, I'm going to talk a little bit about vectors in terms of pulleys. So stick around. I'll see you then.